So secondary here, I'm gonna choose this red color right here. I'm gonna actually go to our qualifier here, which brings up our secondaries, and I'm going to select this red here. Actually, let, let, let's try this in two different ways. Let's try it under the curves, see if we can fix it under the curves. I'm gonna bring the saturation down in this color hue. So that would be hue versus saturation. Remember the second one in this hue versus hue is the one that's going to be adjusted, so I wanna do hue versus saturation. Saturation is going to be adjusted in this hue. So I'm gonna select that hue right there, click, and it will drag, it'll add three dots, here, here, and this continues over to here. Uh, so it goes right, and once it hits the right, it continues over to the left-hand side of the screen here. But I'm going to grab this red here, and I'm just going to drag it down. And look at my saturation on my scope there. It's bringing it down. I still want this to be defined as red, just not super red, not just like that blown-out red right there. So I'm going to bring that down maybe right about there. And I'm going to increase it just to get this little tip right there. Let's drag that over. That's not doing it. Let's see if this side will get it. That side will get it right there. And now we're, we've brought down the red in that. Okay, and see, we didn't need the secondary to do this. Secondary is if you're just really having trouble, you can select a very specific color vector based on hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue, saturation, and luminance. We don't need that right now, so that, that works out just fine. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm liking this grade. Let's, let's uh, play through it a little bit and take a look. Maybe with my original bring down, this is very contrasty. Maybe a little too much. Let's look at our uh, waveform and see waveform. It's not really touching zero, so actually I, I like the contrasty look without blowing out the detail. So that's, that's, that's actually looking nice. We're not hitting the 1023 and we're not hitting the zero, so that, that's looking pretty good. And in fact, if we want to really make sure, we can go to RGB and see. Let's colorize this. So we can see if any of those color channels, some of the times the color channels aren't like really showing harsh lines uh, where these limits are, uh, unless you put on the color. And, and that, that's looking pretty good, so I'm going to turn my waveform back to... Uh, y, which is the luminance. All right, one other, one last thing I probably want to work on in this image here is maybe some skin tone. Maybe bring out some warmth, warmth in the skin tone here because we've got this kind of white blown out area that looks like uh, sunlight kind of flooding in. And I'm going to add one more note here, Alt-S, and we're going to make this one skin tone. Now, you don't always have to work on skin tones. Just if the skin tone tends to be off, this one's not, I don't think that skin tone is very far off as much as it just needs to be maybe a little bit, just add a little bit of warmth to it to kind of bring out the features, that bring to cut, draw attention to the subject. So I'm going to go to Vector Scope, and we're going to look at uh, skin tone here. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is we're going to go down to Secondaries, and we're going to choose her face here based on the secondaries. I'm going to go right in the forehead there because that's kind of the, the kind of mid, most mid-gray area I can choose on here. And now you can kind of see a mask over here. If you want to see that mask up here on your screen, on your big screen, we are going to go right here to the mask feature and turn that on. Now this is a little confusing with the shortcuts on this, but the shortcuts uh, for bringing up your mask here to show what is being keyed up and what you're correcting on this node and what you're not is, first of all, you got Alt or Option. So Option, Shift, H or Alt-Shift-H on a PC. So Alt-Option-Shift-H uh, gives you a black and white mat. And this is to show white is what's being left in and which is being keyed, and then uh, the black is what's being left out and untouched. So we can work on the mask here with either the black and white, or if you do Shift-H, Shift-H, first of all, if, you hit, if you're in the black and white mode, this is really confusing. If you're in the black and white mode and you hit Shift-H, which is for the gray mode, the gray color mode, it first of all toggles it off, and then you hit Shift-H again and it brings it back. Now if I want to get the black and white mode, uh, like I said, if you do Option Shift H, it's going to toggle it off. If it's inside the mask, it'll toggle toggle it off first, and you have to hit Option Shift H again and get to black and white. Otherwise, you can just go up here and click between these two, and you got color gray mode and black and white mode. But those shortcuts, to remember, Shift H for your color mode. You have to hit it twice if you're in the black and white mode. And we're going to look at this mode right here. All right, so I want to get as much as the face as possible. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go down and change our hue here. First of all, I'm going to get it in the middle. Let's expand this a little bit. There we are. we're starting to get more face there. That's good. And now I can move in the middle with my hand here and drag this back and forth and see if I can kind of minimize the pixels outside of her face and see if I can just grab the face. Most of the face is possible and little everything else out here is possible. But sometimes uh, if you have things that are skin tone colored on the face and you see some of that in the shirt or the wall, sometimes that will benefit as well and you won't have to do like a mask just on the face. But let's go down to saturation and move this back and forth. Oh, look at that. Now we're starting to get rid of other items outside the mat there. We can expand this over to the right see what we get not getting much so we're getting a little bit of the can because we're sharing some of the red within the face with the with the can color which is not bad but we can change that later uh, if we if we need to and I'm gonna do saturation as well look at that we're starting to grab a lot of the face but more, way more of the can as well so let's shift that back and forth see if we can kind of get now we're gonna we're gonna get some of that can no matter what 
and we're getting the hands as well. Well, I want the hands in the skin tone, but we're really kind of looking at the face here. So I'm going to get as much as I can as possible. You can use your feather here to kind of feather in and out of the facial features. See, I can drag this across the hand here, and it selects more of the uh, more of the reds in the hands here, more of the skin tone in the hands. Uh, but that happened to grab the and the, you drag this across here. You use your feather and use the feather minus to kind of feather out of it instead. But the, uh, I went to two extremes there, from this to the the shirt, so it like didn't do too well. So I'm going to grab this, and th this really helps when you're doing shadows across the face here. See, that happened to grab more of the face as I click and drag this across the face. It's grabbing more. Of those pixels inside the face as I'm doing a feather into those pixels. We get more of the soft gradient going into the hand here. I grabbed the ring there, so that's probably not good. There's a ring right there. But let's see what we get, even if we just kind of leave the sweater and everything selected a little bit. If you do your black and white mask, you can really see absolutely what you've got here. Let's go to our denoise and kind of what's called do what's called a matte finesse. I'm going to drag this and kind of denoise the whites a little bit. Clean the black here. That'll give us a little bit of darker area. Clean the white just a little bit. And we're, now we're starting to get the, the face really solidly. We could actually probably start moving this around and getting rid of the shirt. Not on saturation. Let's just get there. We're getting mostly the face now. That's good. This is starting to look a lot better. Let's change the soft. And now we're now we're in business. Now we're starting to get mostly the face. I just want to not work on the background as much as I do on the skin tones here. But this can is really selected though. So I'll show you a way of doing a mask if you if you really want to. Ooh, now, I like that. Now, now we're now we're in business here. Now I'm going to blur the radius a little bit. This will just kind of blur the pixels on the on the mask. Just soften it up just ever so slightly, so it doesn't we don't get a kind of hard edged coloring on the on the face and hands. All right, I really like that. So now I'm going to turn my mask off. We can hit uh, Shift H or Shift Option H. Either one will give us back our regular screen here. I'm going to hold down Option, or I'm going to move my mouse in the middle here and just scroll up with my mouse. Like I said, if you're working on a Mac. And you don't, and you don't have, and you have their stupid magic mouse. Don't use it in Resolve. It's it's horrible. Uh, you want a mouse with a middle click on it. Just go buy an old uh, a mouse at the thrift store, and it will do a lot better than the, the, than using the the Mac mouse for this. Because you need your middle click. So I scrolled up to 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 the face here, and now if you want to move this, you can middle click. You can. Uh, rather than oh, okay, sorry, you got, you scroll up like this to go in and out, and now if you middle click and hold it down, you can change what part of your image you're looking at here. So we're going to look at mostly at the face here. I am going to turn on my mask though. We're going to do uh, Shift H to bring up my color gray here, and we're going to look at the skin tones here on, on our on our scopes. And our skin tones happen to be more pushing off towards the red. Let's make sure that it is just not, uh, that it's not the hair or anything else that it, that is mostly the face. I'm going to go to my mask features here. And I'm going to do a temporary mask here. I'm going to click the zero to do kind of a round mask. Let's uh, scroll out to get a little more of the image. And I'm going to make this just show the face. And we're masking off. So that's all I'm looking at right now. So now we can tell uh, what the colors of the face of the skin tone is looking looking like here. Uh, let's bring open our... Let's look at our scope here. And it is pushing just a little bit right to the red there. We're getting a little bit of a spike going off here. Uh, let's mess with this a little bit and see what we get. Kind of experiment. First of all, let's go to here. And we're going to add a little bit more saturation to make the face kind of pop. Let's go big time so you see what's happening here. See how that's just changing the face colors there? But we're going to make that face just pop just a little bit. Let's go... Let's go from 50, and I'm just going to take it around 60 or so, just to make it pop just a little bit. And now let's let's rotate the hue just a little bit, maybe to the left, just to bring it a little bit into the line there and see what we get. That's probably getting a little too yellowish. So actually the skin tones is probably good where they're at with kind of the red, faint red going on there. Let's see if we magenta it up or go the other way. We can get the skin tones right on the skin tone line there. And if we want to get really nitpicky, we can zoom up. Just get this maybe on the cheekbone or something. Just get this mask on the cheekbone here. Make it so small that we're just getting a little section of the che cheekbone and see what we're really getting. See, and that skin tone is looking pretty accurate to me. So maybe aside from a little saturation boost, we don't really need to alter it all that much. So we're, we're right along. We're riding the line there, and it's looking good. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my mask and turn it off here. I'm going to go back to masks. Just click on here, and it'll turn it off. Shift Z to zoom back out. But see what ha happened here is I... I I boosted the saturation on the reds, and actually we brought back, we kind of undid what we did before where the, the red is pushing out. So, so if we just want to work on skin tone here and not see the red and not alter the red, we can go to our masks. We can go to a square mask, add a square mask here. We can make this the shape of the can. Bring it down over the can and make it the shape of the can. And this is a moving shot, so I'm going to show you what we can do to kind of keep that detract to the... And now, now that uh, it's on here, the only thing it's affecting is the can, but I want to inverse it. We're going to go down here and click our inverse button. And now it's getting rid of the can 
and keeping everything else out there. So now the saturation on the can. Let's look at the saturation on our can. That way the saturation on our can is in check. And the face, let's, let's look at the face really closely here. Uh, zoom up. And I'm going to disable this node, and we're going to look at what we've done here. So Command-D to disable the node. And see, now her face, it looks fine, but you do this Command-D, and look at what we've done. We've added a little bit of color to her face. So that's good, especially in this kind of white, blown-out environment. Uh, that's good to bring out a little bit of the facial features. And I think we're fairly done on this uh, shot here. But, oh, one, one other, th other thing here is we want to track this. We want to track this here because this is a moving shot. So to get this mask to follow the can, because this is a moving shot. Look at this as it moves in and out. That loses track of the can right there. Let's get it right where it's locked on the can here. And now I'm going to go to my tracker, which is right here. And I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty details of the tracker. This gets quite advanced. But if you're just doing a basic move like this, this is pretty easy. And by the way, the mask here, what, you, what you've got on the mask is uh, this is the feather. From, from right here to here, it's going to feather. See, I can kind of choke this in on the, on the can. This, uh, this inner line right here is what it is being, being absolutely left out right now. And then it will gradually feather off to this point right here. So we could uh, choke that in a little bit because this might overlap into the hands a little bit. And that's, that's, that's fine. We're going to be looking mostly at the face, but I'm going to bring in my, my feathered mask on the edge here. If you want to get really, really accurate there. Uh, and actually, I'm going to bring that in on the inner part of the can right there. And, that, and now it will start feathering here and we'll turn uh, completely back on right there. And it will, it will start from here and feather to there. So that, this is your feather right there. All right, so let's, uh, right now I'm in the middle of my uh, clip here, or about uh, three quarters of the way through. So I'm going to track this backwards. I'm going to hit play to go backwards. Actually, let's go forwards and finish it off since we're close to the end here. So I'm going to hit uh, play to go track forward. And it's got a really nice fast tracker. Look at this, how accurate it is. Even if this thing goes off screen, uh, it, it still tracks it to uh, anticipates its movement off screen, which is cool. It's got a really cool algorithm. So now I'm going to move this back to that keyframe that where it started right there on that keyframe right there and now I'm going to track backwards. It's already done the track forward, now it will track backwards. And watch how it changes scale, position, uh, it'll do rotation as well. This is a very, very nice tracker and it does it really, really fast as well. There we go. And this is not this mask is not effect, affecting my graphic right there because that is a separate layer. So that track is only on that, uh, is only, that, that mask is only on this layer here. So, okay, let's play through that and take a look at it. And actually if we deselect that node, It'll play it without the, the highlights on it, without the masks. All right, I'm digging this. It's looking good. Okay, let's look at the before and after here. So I'm going to hit Shift D. Let's get a little bit back where we're just seeing her face there. Shift D is a bypass. Look at the where we started with how flat that was. And Shift D, look how contrasting and nice and cinematic this is looking now.